Hello, this is Richard Spangler with Lion's Voice Ministries, and we're talking today about a lion, a sheep, or both. Jesus was both. He was both a lion and a lamb. Even when he came, we look at the at him coming today uh, as we look at it as back then we look at him as coming as a sheep to be led to the slaughter which he was that was his intent his in purpose but he also exhibited the lion he had authority he moved in authority and lions move in authority sheep don't sheep just kind of follow whatever and in matthew 7 8 through 29 when he finishes teaching on the sermon on the mount he says and when he finished saying these things the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught with one who had authority the lion he had authority he spoke and the people listened and heard remember he was speaking from an ill hillside he had he had to speak of authority so everyone could hear him and the people heard and they realized he spoke of authority not as teachers of the law he was a, a at this point he was exhibiting the lion the authority of god the lion of the tribe of judah when the next incident is in eight, Matthew eight twenty three through twenty seven, Jesus is calmed to the storm when he gets in the boat, and they're passing over, and the waves begin to break in. While Jesus was sleeping, the disciples awoke him, and said, "Lord, we're going to drown." And he said, "Oh, ye evil of faith!" Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it completely went calm. The lion. I don't think if Jesus had said, Mr. Storm, would you please calm down and just just take it easy on us? No, he rebuked the storm. He rebu he used his authority as the Lion of Judah, as a, as, a, as a lion, the Son of God, to calm the storm, to speak to it with authority, and to bring it to a halt. The widow, the the raising of another example is in Jesus seven and uh, Luke seven eleven through sixteen. Um, this is a very powerful one. It has both the lion and the lamb in it. Uh, when he, soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town, the gate a dead person was being carried out, the only son of the mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, he went up to her and said, Don't cry. The Lamb, the compassion of God, the mercy of God. It was his, it was passion coming up. It was, it was a very unique point to realize that he was speaking to her in a very calm manner and, and consoling her and comforting her. A lamb, comes, a lamb can be very comforting, and Jesus was being comforting. He was being in that mode. And, and, but then when he went up and touched the briar where they were carrying him and the bearer stood still, he said, young man, I say to you, get up. The lion, the authority comes out. And the dead man sits up and begins to talk, and Jesus gives it back to the mother, and everyone was filled with awe. This is an example of another example of the authority of God, the Lion of Judah coming through Jesus, at the same time being a lamb, being ministering to people, helping people. But when he needed to use the when he needed the lion to come out, it came out. We see this again in Matthew 23, 13 through 39, where he pronounces the seven woes on the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. This was authority. This was him saying, you're not doing it right. He called them out. He called them um, hypocrites, vipers, snakes, whitewashed tombs with dead men's bones inside. In other words, you're full of filth and disgusting things. And that, then he also says that you're not you're not you're you're not getting in yourself and you're keeping others from getting in or you're training up people and making them worse than you are he called these people out he called this was authority speaking and he pronounced these woes of authority a lion roaring over what the leadership was doing and the fact that they weren't they weren't even close to doing what god had told them to do they weren't leading the people. They had forgotten mercy. They had forgotten love. They had forgotten the most weighty parts of the law, which is to love, which is to have mercy. And they had forgotten all of that. And Jesus called them out on it. Then in the Garden of Gethsemane, in, a, um, in Luke 22, 49 through 41, Jesus saw what was going to happen, and they said, Lord, should we strike out with our swords? And one of them struck the servant's high priest, cutting off a right ear. 
And Jesus answered, no more of this. In other words, there's authority here. There's a crowd. There's screaming. There's yelling. People drawing swords. And when you're drawing swords, you're not listening. So Jesus had an authority that raised above the sound. And he said, no more of this. The lion. Immediately, everything stopped. Everyone froze. And the man whose ear was cut off, Jesus touched him and healed him. The lamb. The compassion, the mercy of God. Even in the midst, even with someone who was going to take him as a prisoner. Another example of this in the garden was John 18, 4 through 8. Jesus, knowing what was going to happen, went out to them and said, Who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they applied. I am he, he said. And when he said, I am see." I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground, the lion. Even though at the pinnacle of this point of being the sacrificial lamb, when he said, I am he, the authority and power of God flowed out so powerfully that they fell to their knees. They collapsed on the ground. All these men because the power of God, because the lion roared out of him when he said, I am. And then they asked again, he asked them again, who do you want? And they said, Jesus is Nazareth. I told you, I am he. If you're looking for me, let these men go. And they did what he said. And all, by all rights, they had the right to arrest all of the disciples. But at his word, they seized him and let everybody else go. It was an amazing example. And today we are called, uh, as it says in First Peter 2, 9 and 10, but ye are chosen people, a royal priesthood. Royalty is a lion. Priesthood is a lamb, a holy nation, a special possession. We are called to do both. We are called to be the the lion, the royal, the king, the leader. To lead nations, to lead people, to point them to God. And as priests, we're to, we're to act as with the authority of God against some lamb, some lamb showing mercy and compassion on those, pointing them to Jesus as the forgiver of sins and the Savior that they need. We have both, just as much as Jesus did. We are lions and we are lambs at the same time. We roar and then we come in peace. Today, sadly, most a lot of people in the church are saying, well, we, we can't say anything, we can't do anything, all we can do is pray, and they don't even pray with authority. We have authority, we have to exercise it. Jesus, when he prayed, exercised authority. Jesus, when he touched something, he exercised authority. Jesus, when he went to the leadership of the day, the rulers of the nation, and rebuked them, he did it with authority. He didn't do it coming as wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Or wimpy, 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 I'll put it that way. The fact is, he came with one who had authority, and he spoke in authority, even though his mission was to be the Lamb of God. And that Lamb of God that sacrifice in that he showed God's love, God's mercy, God's compassion for the people around, the people of the, not only the people of Israel, but the people of the whole earth. The lamb making the sacrifice. The lion was showing the authority of God, showing him as the king, as the one who was king. I just gave several examples here. When the woman touched his garments, when he was walking down the road and she reached out and she said, I just touched him with his garment, I'll be healed. And she reached out and touched him. And she, he says, who touched me? Now, that's a that stops a crowd. There's a crowd, they're all pressing in, they're all touching. He said, who touched me? And she comes forward trembling and fearing and says, I did. And he says, your faith has made you whole. Go your way. No condemnation, no no anger, no no upsetness that they said she had drawn on the power of God that resided in him and radiated around him and she was healed and he understood he was moved with compassion with her again when Jesus came to the tomb we see of Lazarus we see the same thing the lion and the lamb the lamb weeping over the loss of his friend the lion 
commanding the stone be rolled away and saying, Lazarus, come forth. When Jesus exercised authority, he didn't exercise, he exercised authority with authority of a lion. He didn't come against anything and go, well, well, maybe, can you, would you, could you come out of this person, Mr. Demon? Uh, can, can you, Legion, let go? He, no, he commanded them to come out. And, and, and they knew who he was. And they said, are, are, have you come here to torment us before time? Let us go into the pigs. And he says, go. And they went into the pigs. That's authority. That's a lion. He didn't lay down. He was a lion and a lamb. And at the same time, he would take little children and spend time with them and sit them on his knee. The lamb. So we have the same calling today. It's time for the church to be both. It's time for us as believers to be both the lion and the lamb. The lion to stand up and say, these things aren't right. To speak loudly in the marketplace with the authority that God has given us as leaders, as kings, as royalty of the house of God. The ultimate rulers, the ultimate royalty. We have the authority to stand up and say, no, the government, that's like the government, you're doing wrong. The leaders in our government, you're doing wrong. You are saying one thing and you're doing the other. You are lying to the people and you're going about doing whatever you want to do behind your back, behind their backs. You have no care for the people. If we start standing up and saying that, speaking the truth with authority, it will echo, it will resonate in the nation and in, in, and in the world. But yet at the same time, be that lamb that reaches out to comfort people who are hurting, to take care of the sick, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to feed the poor, to take care of the poor, truly take care of them, not not keep them oppressed and beaten down. We have an authority, and we need to exercise that authority at this time, at this place, in our own country. We're coming up on an election in the United States in a few weeks, and we have to look at the Word of God, and we have to compare it to what's being said and what's being done by our leaders. And if they're not doing it, then we need to take action. We need to stand in authority and say, you're wrong. You're wrong for trying to take per the parents' right to raise their children, to have a say-so in what they're taught in school. You're wrong to, to stand and say, it's not, it's, we didn't cause a situation when you when you cause things. You're wrong for for taking your own interests at heart and not the interests of the people. It's time for us, and it's also time for us when someone is in sin and walking in sin and not doing right to show that compassion, not come at them like a lion. Come at them like a lamb and say, God loves you. God wants to set you free. He, he sent his son Jesus to die for you. Can I pray for you? Very few people will turn down prayer. Very few people will say, no, I don't want you to pray for me. And if you're listening to God and you're hearing from God, you'll know what to say. And you'll be able to discern what to do. There are so many people trapped in addictions. So many people trapped in hurt and pain. They need the lamb. They don't need you to come as them like a lion. But for those who are in authority, those who are keeping people locked away, those who are keeping people from knowing the truth, for those like they are, they are white large sepulchers with dead men's bones inside. They are snakes. And they need to be called out. We have the authority. We need to exercise it. Whether we're in a conversation with someone, whether we're in a meeting, we need to stand up. Jesus didn't care he was in a crowd when he called the Pharisees and the Sadducees vipers. He didn't care that he was calling them out and calling them hypocrites in public. He spoke the truth with authority. He spoke the truth as the Lion of Judah. And he roared it.
and we have that same ability to speak the truth and roar it with authority of the authority of God the authority that God has given us as his children as joint heirs with Christ and then we also have the same heart that Jesus had to be moved with compassion to heal the sick to raise the dead to set the captives free we're both lions and lambs the lion and the lamb together let's pray father god we ask right now lord that you would indeed work mightily and powerfully in each of us god lord show us how to have the lion the roar of the lion of judah to stand up for righteousness and to stand against evil wherever it's found to speak out when speak out needs to be done with authority and with power and lord at the same time let us be moved with the compassion and the passion that you had god to minister in love to those who are in need and are hurting and point them to you lord god we ask this right now in jesus name amen and amen well, I hope you've enjoyed this teaching today, and I would ho hope you will reach out to me at Lions Voice Ministries at yahoo.com is my email. Also, you can can find my books, uh, The Covenants and the Fire, and The Adventures in the Spirit, a series of prophetic visions on on Amazon. And of course, if you'd like to give to this ministry, you can find me on on uh, Cash App. Uh, just look for R L Spang. Uh, the cash app and you can find me in a very simple way it's a powerful way to give to this ministry and encourage me to continue to do what we're doing here and to pay for the time and everything so again thank you we again ask you to bless you and we bless you we thank you and we ask you to work, God to work mightily and powerfully in your life blessing you and keeping you again that cash app is a, the dollar sign rich capital R-I-C-H spang capital S-P-A-N-G Rich thing, you know, cash app. And again, thank you, and God bless you. Until we talk again, have a great day. Bye-bye.